This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Ah, uh, yes, the four elements. Anyone who had a hyperfixation on both Naruto and Avatar The Last Airbender at the age of 12 will know that this is an exhausted topic. So, of course, I'm here to do it again. I feel like my channel at this point is just looking at inanimate objects and being like, is this a character? I'm like a sleazy producer from the 1970s. I see something and I'm just like, whoa, that's an idea. Can we get this tree down to the studio? It's gonna be a star. The idea of personifying the four elements is nothing new. I'm sure that it's something that a lot of illustrators do at some point. It kind of goes hand in hand with only drawing pretty girls, which ad admittedly is also just me at this point. I'm trying to quit, okay? It's just hard. They're just so pretty. And I probably wouldn't do the four elements because they've been done really well over and over and over and over. Except that my audience has been requesting them and I'm kind of interested in challenging myself just to see if I can bring any originality to this idea. So, let's take a look inside my brain. So if you've read the title of this video, you probably know that this is just part one. In this video, I'm just going to design fire and water. And in the next video, part two, which is gonna come out next week, I'm going to design earth and air. And the reason for that is really just that my art process tends to take so long that I think doing all four in one video would be way too much. So as many of you know, my first step in character designing is to make a mood board of what I have in mind, just so that I can take whatever jumbled imagery is in my brain and sort of visualize it. So for these characters, since I'm trying to take sort of an original approach. I'm not just going to go with fire or water. I want to play around with like other concepts. So on the fire mood board, I have a lot of images of like gold and sun imagery and kintsugi and dragons. These characters, I kind of want to really play up the goddess angle and kind of even make their powers or abilities more than just a bending. I want to make them very specific to these characters. And for water, I have a lot of like sea creatures and like beautiful gowns and like like these armor inspired dresses that I'm currently very obsessed with. I just generally have a lot of inspiration for her that's very like elegant and flowy because that's what I think of whenever I think of water. I admittedly have fewer ideas for this character, but I think she's gonna come together in the end. We'll figure it out. To visualize my water girl and the other goddesses a little bit more, I figured some thumbnailing was in order. So since the four elements have been done so many different ways, I first wanted to begin with some concept art and rough sketches to map out my ideas. As you in the beginning, I spent a lot of time assembling their Pinterest boards and thinking about how I wanted to portray them, but for the most part, the silhouette of their gowns and clothing were inspired by one gown or image, and from there, I tried to build on the concept and integrate their elements more. Silhouette and readability are super important for character design. You really want your character to be immediately distinguishable from the others, but you also want their colors and shapes to be harmonious if they're an ensemble, which is why I like to do little rough sketches of a group together first to map out the silhouette, basic colors, and shape language. I wanted to lean into the goddess magical girl angle a lot to set these characters aside from things like Avatar and the Dragon Prince, so I opted for armor and gowns because you know I can't get enough of that. I also wanted their physical appearances to be unique from each other, so if you struggle with same face or body syndrome, doing rough sketches of your ensemble together first, using a lot of exaggerated shapes, can really help to give your characters a unique look. So that's basically what I did here. And as a side note, I'll have my Pinterest boards linked in the pinned comment if you guys want to take a look while watching. You might even get some spoilers for next week. Much like the previous installments in the series, I'm going to make these more so illustrations instead of flat designs because this year I'm kind of trying to focus a lot on improving my art and working more on like full illustration techniques. And these videos are like a very good opportunity to do that. So uh, speaking of leveling up my art skills, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you've been following my Turning Things Into Characters series, you'll know that Skillshare is a massive online learning community for creative folks that offers classes in countless topics like illustration, 
fashion, digital art, video creation, and even cooking. In 2022, I'm really trying to build my portfolio and work on bringing more emotion, stylization, and polish to my work. So Sarah Holiday's class, illustrated environments, drawing a stylized landscape scene in Procreate has been really fun to dive into, especially since I am a brand new Procreate user. She works with backgrounds in a very similar way that I do with a lot of color blocks, layers, and textures. So this class was really accessible for me. And I think it also would be really accessible for beginners, which is something else that I really love about Skillshare because they offer classes varying by skill level, meaning you can learn depending on your experience. And Sarah covers so many fundamental concepts like perspective, focal points, thumbnailing, and atmospheric lighting. But she breaks them down so that they're really easy to grasp, which allows me to focus more on storytelling and emotion, which are the key components of my art that I'm really trying to improve. Skillshare is also ad-free, so you won't get interrupted when you're engrossed in a class. New premium classes are launched each week, so you'll never run out of things to learn, and their entire catalog is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. So I highly recommend checking out Sarah's class, especially since I get a lot of comments from you guys talking about how intimidating backgrounds can be, and you can try it out for free because the first 1,000 people who join using the link in my description will get a free one-month trial of Skillshare. Thank you so much to Skillshare for being a wonderful long-term sponsor and friend of the channel. Now. Let's get into the art process. Moving on to the individual designs, the first girl I worked on was Fire, since I had the most ideas for her right off the bat. You can see me doing more quick concept doodles here to work out some of the details of her design before going onto the full illustration. I really wanted to use interesting geometry for her armor and try to work in the shapes of flames, and the overall shape and construction was inspired a lot by these armor designs I found on Pinterest, especially this gold harness, which I love. But it was also inspired by the heavy use of gold armor pieces and Mel's design from Arcane. Mel's look inspired a lot of this character too, as you'll probably be able to see later on. And I've mentioned it before, but my style of character designing relies a lot on taking ideas that are similar and linking them aesthetically in a design. So that's sort of what I'm doing here. I do this a lot with shape language, color, and silhouette. So for this character, I was inspired a lot by sun goddess imagery, dragons, kintsugi, and the Midas touch. Obviously, you can see how these ideas aren't the same, but kind of related. Whenever I'm designing characters, a lot of times I try to find things that are somewhat linked and then sort of like put them together like this. I often even go as far as to troll around on Wikipedia and find things that are like seemingly disparate ideas and find like a little thing that is sort of similar thematically and just throw it together and bam, there's a character. Highly effective. I recommend. It is chaotic though. So like fire is often associated with destruction and negativity, but I wanted to flip that on its head for this character. I know I said I didn't want to go the Avatar route, but there's an episode of Avatar called The Firebending Masters where Zuko learns that fire can represent energy and life, not just destruction. So that's really what inspired this goddess's abilities in general aesthetic. I wanted her to be a healer and sort of a goddess of energy, rebirth, and life force. Rebirth and life force being inspired a little bit by the legend of the Phoenix and her healing ability are inspired, of course, by Avatar, but also the Japanese art of Kintsugi and the legend of the Midas Touch. Allow me to explain. Everything I know about the Midas Touch honestly comes from that one episode of Wishbone. I actually don't know if it's like a narrative story or a legend, but TLDR, everything Midas touched in this story turned to gold and it really wasn't a fun time for him. But instead of this character turning things to gold, she'd be able to heal with her touch and her healing would leave gold patterns on whoever or whatever she healed, similar to gold filling gaps in pottery repaired with kintsugi. When it comes to pottery, you can also probably make some kind of thematic comparison between fire like curing pottery and this character being able to control fire. Eh, eh. It's a reach, but this is how my brain works for character designs. The literal meaning of kintsugi is joining with gold, and the art is also about appreciating human flaws and broken things, which I think also fits this character rather well with the concept of rebirth. So this character is associated with growth and life force of the sun, gold, where gold is kind of symbolic of the riches of life itself. I don't know, is that cheesy? I think it's pretty cool. To get a little specific about how her powers would work if she used them in a 
magical girl-esque way, I think she would be able to wield fire similar to firebenders, but I don't think her fire would have the ability to burn, but rather the ability to transfer or take away energy. Almost like she's able to bend energy on a molecular level itself. Maybe she could make an enemy's attack combust or burn away as a means of absorbing it. And I'm also thinking that that's how her healing could work. Maybe she's able to absorb an enemy's energy so that she can change its form and use it to heal someone. So basically she would be able to absorb or negate an enemy's power or energy and then redirect that to heal a wound or strengthen an ally. I feel like this is a pretty common power set in like video games or RPGs, but I think it fits this character pretty well. Design wise, I tried to make her look as ethereal as possible, but I also wanted her to have like a fierce warrior aesthetic. I ended up finding some really good photo shoots from Pinterest of girls who served as great inspiration for this character. And I also used them as face reference for this illustration, mostly these two. I am using the word goddesses pretty loosely for these character designs because it mostly just serves as an excuse for me to design armor and gowns that would be totally impractical for them in battle, but fully practical for style points. I'm kind of thinking of these characters in terms of how gods in Marvel and DC are designed, think Thor or Wonder Woman. Their garments and armor are more there for characterization and aesthetics than for actual protection. So I was also inspired by Wonder Woman's armor in 1984 for this design actually. It's like super impractical, but also very shiny, which is something my dumb dumb magpie brain is attracted to. Okay, seriously, wouldn't metal on your crotch like this be super uncomfortable? I just, I hate it. <clears throat> but I did use this in her design anyways, because I feel like this outrageous leotard bodice thing is actually very regal and gives off such strong feminine energy to me. I don't know if it's ballet aesthetics or I'm being brainwashed, but I gave her a gold armor kind of bodice that has a general shape that was inspired by this harness and of course the weird leotard thing, along with some shoulder armor and greaves. I also added a few pieces that were more so armor inspired jewelry. I got a few of these ideas from the All The Stars music video with Kendrick Lamar and SZA. My design wasn't quite as detailed, but I definitely incorporated some of that gold plate armor and I wanted the shape language of the armor to mimic the shape of flame so I tried to make the pieces curved and sharp and I also gave her a headpiece that's meant to look a bit like rays of the sun which is a dialed back version of some of these headpieces which I tried to make complement her hairstyle which is supposed to be like knots or buns based loosely on these images. I don't know how successful I really was at drawing the hair because I wanted the ends to fade into flames and I'm like really struggling to draw curly hair right now. I think it was much better executed in the rough thumbnail. Honestly, I kind of wish I had painted this part because I think the hair texture would have come out better, but that's just more of a weird art style struggle thing. I'm not a fan of line art right now. I'm starting to think so much in terms of solid color blocks and shapes that drawing just lines doesn't compute for my brain the same way anymore. It's weird. I'll figure it out. Anyway, speaking of art style struggle, probably the hardest part of this illustration was capturing the dress part of this design. I wanted it to look like cool or a really lightweight flowy fabric, but I wanted the shape to look a bit kind of organic, like flames. And this really took several tries to execute. I still don't know if it even looks right. But I think heavy gowns and fully fabrics like this are just so pretty. So it's something I'll be working on my art for sure. Speaking of working on my art, these design videos occasionally double as illustration practice for me, which is why I do like full on illustrations instead of character sheets. So for these, I wanted to practice some posing and composition and work on painting light a little bit. And for the composition aspect, I wanted to add an animal companion to these illustrations and also for the aspect of I wanted Kira's fun time. So obviously the fire goddess gets a dragon because originality is dead. Dragons and flames and this many light sources are historically really tricky for me to draw. So this piece was no different. There's plenty of things I want to work on, but I'm pretty happy with how my fire goddess came out despite being a challenge. But like, that's the point. We got to work on these things. I, I still have no idea really how to draw a dragon, but I think my dragon turned out like, okay, all things considered. And 
and I think he ended up having a pretty cool composition even though his anatomy makes literally no sense. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how this piece turned out. I think I accomplished what I set out to do. Hi there! We interrupt this video to bring you the name decisions on the Tree Knights from the previous installment in the series. You guys suggested some lovely names. It was a difficult decision, but for Oak, I decided on Gunther, which was suggested by Crystal Rue because I look at this man and my brain just says, it's Gunther. So maybe his title could be like Gunther the Gallant since he's a tank. I, d I don't know. Uh, for Birch, I decided to go with Felix because it was suggested multiple times by different people, uh, by Ingrid Schroeder and Sokka Vibes. There is definitely something indistinguishable about this man that reads as Felix. Uh, so maybe his title is Felix the Furtive since he's a stealthy boy. And finally for Willow, I picked Wade, which was suggested by Sarah Floors. He just feels like a Wade to me. His title could be Wade the Wisdom since he is the strategist. Thank you everybody for your contributions. Remember to suggest names for fire and water in the comments below. And let's get back to it. Now we are moving on to our water goddess. My vision for this character was a lot less clear. I really identify personally with the fire element, so I had lots of ideas for that character, but water, not so much. But I do think being less emotionally attached to a concept does allow me to be more objective about whether design is working. So for this one, I leaned hard into shape language and the feel and flow of water. Sometimes you just gotta like go with the flow, dude. You know what I'm saying? Am I talking to me? <laughs> it's way too late to be recording right now. Admittedly, I had a bit of a brain fart for this one because water usually includes both water and ice when talking about the four elements. So unfortunately, I kind of focused on just water for this design, but I think it's okay since it sets her apart from characters like Katara and Yue since their designs incorporate a lot of cold weather attire. In general, I was just really struggling to find direction for this character at first until I stumbled upon this dress. And from there, <laughs> well, I was on a groove. The silhouette of this dress works really well for flowing water and the fact that the silhouette also emphasizes the upper body works nicely as an antithesis to the fire design, which emphasizes more of the lower body. And when I got into putting my own spin on this dress, I really wanted it to look like literal flowing water. So I pulled a lot of inspiration from Mayoko's watered down illustrations, which are absolutely gorgeous. But again, I tried to keep my own spin on it. I also wanted to add in complimentary armor bits to my fire girl since they're opposite. So I added some pauldrons, bracers, waist and neck pieces, and I wanted to keep the armor more minimal and ornamental since the gown is the real star of this design. I wanted everything to feel very abstract and drippy, so I went for very rounded curved shape language. I used the same ideas for the design of the hairstyle and went for a half up, half down hairstyle that was similar to my fire girl. And yes, we're not trying to copy Avatar here but I was inspired by hair loopies a little bit for her bangs, so. I also wanted to add an animal companion for my water girl, but I couldn't think of one particular animal that felt right. I thought of a shark, a killer whale would have been cool, but I ultimately settled on an octopus and some jellyfish to fill out the composition. I just like the sea creatures idea. Although in hindsight, I totally should have gone full on mythical and just added Cthulhu. That would have been so sick. I can't believe I didn't think of that. Maybe next time. When it came to colors, I kept it simple and iconic and used a lot of different shades of blue. The rendering on the dress in the water was like so insanely fun. I feel like my water skills at this point are a bit above my fire skills. Drawing especially the bended water was like so fun to me. There's just something about drawing that frothy bit on the ends that's just incredibly satisfying. I recommend it as a stress reliever. You can do it when you're getting a massage. Um, I think it would be nice pair with, I don't know, Pinot Grigio or some tea. <laughs> This voiceover is derailed. Um, for the colors of the sea creatures, I just went with purples and pinks because I feel like they look pretty nice with blue. And I mostly rendered this the same way I did with the fire illustration. But admittedly, I feel like the styles of the illustrations feel a little different, especially with how I drew their faces. Water feels a bit more stylized. That's probably because I used some specific face references for fire while water was pulled from a few different sources. That is frankly another thing I wanna work on my art this year, just generally making things more 
more cohesive in trying to define my style. So that felt a little bit weird, but that's why illustrations like this are excellent practice. Okay, so finally, when I design characters who have powers of some sort, the power usually drives the design, but I wrote myself into a bit of a corner with water because water is traditionally associated with healing and my fire character is the group healer. But I think that's uh, okay because my goal was really to have a different take on the four elements. So after giving it some thought, I decided water would be the goddess of wisdom, time, and have the abilities of water manipulation, acute precognition, and time reversal. Water is sometimes used to symbolize change, choices, and the passage of time. So this would be like the Doctor Strange or Alice from Twilight character. She would be able to foresee certain events that happen in the near future and reverse the flow of time by a margin of like a few minutes or hours, but these abilities wouldn't be totally reliable because like Doctor Strange's abilities, she can see multiple outcomes of how time flows, which is why she can reverse time to attempt another outcome, but there is no guarantee the outcome will be in her favor. This means she can also anticipate her opponent's moves to a certain extent, while her water manipulation abilities make her own choices difficult to anticipate. I feel like this would kind of work like Sharingan and Naruto. It's not a direct comparison but I, I think you get my drift. Also in the realm of Naruto, gosh, uh, I'm a nerd. When it comes to the elemental style, certain styles are weaker against others because they actually make one stronger. So air isn't effective against fire because air makes fire stronger or whatever. I'll touch on this a little bit more in part two, but for this team dynamic, I kind of want this to be how they could fight in duos because like I said before, air and fire would strengthen each other because oxygen reasons, I guess. I don't know. This is not based in science and earth and water would strengthen each other because my earth character is actually going to have plant abilities as well. Finally, I don't tend to focus as much on personality or story in videos where I'm designing higher concept characters because then everyone wants me to make a whole story about it and I have way too many stories as it is. But these ladies definitely fit into my Sky Girls Tree Knights pantheon that I have going. I'm just turning abstract concepts into beautiful people at this point. The lore would surely get get way too intricate for me to keep track as I make more of these videos. So feel free to headcanon all you want about these characters. I'll even accept probably some things that you guys decide on as canon. These characters are a gift from me to you because I have entirely too many OCs as it is, so have a great time. With that said, here are the finished designs for Fire and Water. This was super fun to have a crack at. I don't know if I brought any originality whatsoever to this concept, but you guys wanted my take, so here it is. I kind of love it either way. I especially love drawing very illustrative representations of characters for these videos, so it was great to get a chance to work on composition and my rendering for Fire and Water and drawing some animal companions because I really miss drawing animals. So let me know what you think of these ladies in the comments and remember to come back next week for part two. I'll be designing air and earth in the next video. And also let me know what I should name these ladies and feel free to come up with some stories or group dynamics or lore. I love reading those kinds of comments. Hey, this video is over now. Thanks for watching till the end. I hope you enjoyed my string of consciousness this week. I'm sorry if any of the footage was like I am still trying to figure out how to record these videos so that they frankly don't nauseate people. In the meantime, thank you so much for bearing with me. I always really enjoy drawing character designs, probably my favorite kind of content to make right now. It's just like right up my alley and I'm hoping to like build on this content pretty soon. I have plans, so. Stay tuned. <laughs> Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Remember to check them out and their free trial. Uh, they might have tutorials that I don't have. I really like their platform. If you want to support the channel, you can like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications, you know, do the YouTube things. I really appreciate it when you do. And as we've established, when you do so, I write personal love letters to you and only you in my diary. You will never see those. Please stop asking. Speaking of support, we hit 100,000 subscribers like last week and I haven't really posted about it on the channel or even on my Instagram because frankly I have been in a state of shock and I haven't known what to do because in the course of January we grew maybe like over 10,000 subscribers which really caught me off guard. So I just want to say a sincere thank you to 
each and every one of you who has subscribed and watched my videos. I really appreciate you guys because right now I am like enjoying what I do so much and uh, it's stressful. I'm still not great at it. I'm still learning a lot, but I have a lot of fun content planned for the future and I'm just looking forward to this year learning and growing as a creator and I'm really lucky to have such a supportive audience. I can't tell you how many times your comments or just general support has encouraged me and literally kept me going and kept me inspired to create. So this is gonna sound hecka cheesy, but having like 100,000 subscribers on YouTube has been like a dream of mine since I was probably like 11 years old. I started out on this platform at 11 years old, I don't know, maybe younger, this is embarrassing, making animashes. I was like, oh, now this is gonna be a thing someday. It wasn't, but it was an excellent stepping stone. <laughs> Anyways, I guess what I'm trying to say is, numbers are silly. You guys are more than a number. And the proof of that is that you have helped me to succeed in a goal that I never thought I would meet. I never thought I would be able to make a somewhat decent income from art. And you have given me a very solid chance at my dream. And if you think that just watching someone's video doesn't make that much of a difference in their life. I guess this is me saying even small things like that actually like really can make a difference in someone's life. So anyways, <laughs> uh, I guess I just wanna say, I wanna try to find a way to celebrate. So comment below what you want me to do as a celebration. Like, is it a Q&A? Is it a specific video? A vote answers you like. I would really love to do like a live stream or something. My internet is terrible. I don't know if that's humanly possible at this point. But one of the things I'm thinking about is maybe starting a, a Discord server. So if you guys like that idea and you want me to start a Discord server, it might take a while to get up there and I'm probably gonna need like mods and stuff. But if that's something you want, like let, let me know. Um, this is too long. <coughs> anyway, that is all for now. I will see you guys next week for part two. But now if you'll excuse me, I am very busy. I have to go and fire bin some chickens. I'm going to cook myself chicken figures in my oven. That's that means. Okay, bye.